Yeah, this, this season was really incredible in a lot of ways. I mean, our, our team, I think, grew a ton through it. Um, and, you know, at the end, when you've got kids coming off the bus after a postseason tournament saying, we don't have practice on Monday? That's weird. I want to go to practice on Monday. You know, you, you've had a good year. And, and so I think in some ways they, they recognize it was a really, really good year, had the chance to, to finish some things off and make it extraordinary. Um, and I think that kind of leads them toward wanting to come back and, and get ready into the fall and into next season. Yeah, so getting to open the season at home we thought was really important for a team that was very young. We had a, a ton of freshmen. We knew some of them were going to have to be on the field and be ready to go. And so scheduling that, I think we did like a Friday evening. Um, it, it's February, right? So we got to play some February Colorado softball, and they got to feel what it's like to play February Colorado softball in terms of playing a really cold game. Um, but we came out of the shoot like crazy, right? Uh, offensively, they came out really ready to go. Um, and ended up splitting that series, but got our feet wet at home, and, and that was really important to us. Then to go down on the road um, in, in sort of hostile territory when you get down into some, some LSC opponents, you know, we, we're kind of up and down there, trying to figure out rotations. It's really, tr it's really challenging to do with a limited number of games, but again, young, young kids on the field, getting them some exposure, uh, trying to get some of our veterans settled in and, and ready to go, and trying to do that within you know four to six games um, to, to then turn around and, and start at home and, and get things going within conference. So uh, I think our team really played well at home this year. We were fortunate to get to move a number of series home, especially early in the series, or excuse me, early in the, in the conference schedule. And that just helped our kids get so much more comfortable so that by the time we get to Regis, right, where they had a really, really hot, hot start, we felt very at home and, and sort of comfortable in our identity as a team by that point in the year. And it's really fun to, to have those close games and, and really contentious games at home and, and come away with a split in that series, which of course, you know, preludes down to the, the end of the season when you see them again and you're kind of in the rubber match in the postseason. But we felt really good coming out of that series and felt like we had a lot of momentum at that point. We had a lot of one-run games in, in this in this year, and, and so getting walked off on in those Metro games where you're just saying, like, gosh, if we could just hang on or, or put up just a little bit more insurance, um, you know, th those are really tough, but I think that our, our team really grew from them and recognized, like, we're right there. We're right there in these games where I think in years past it's sort of been like, well, we dropped that, you know, and, and so – I think it made them more hungry going down the stretch in the season and recognizing the ability to put people away when we need to. And, and that became really clutch as, as we kind of moved through those tough series. And even, you know, picking up the, the spring break games against CCU, who we weren't scheduled to play in conference. You know, originally that was supposed to be a, a four game series, but weather didn't want to cooperate with that. And it, it was just another chance for us to sort of learn and grow from adversity because we were playing in some massive wind in that doubleheader and our kids, you know, we made some mistakes and, and we forced some mistakes, but all through it, we're sort of gaining momentum and, and learning who we were and how to compete together. This season, really, we've had years where we faced the top of the conference first and then some of the lower seeded teams and we've had the opposite. This one was a little bit better of a mix. Um, and I think that that helped our kids in rhythm too, because you're not able to get super, super high, get that you know, get a false sense of confidence or get super, super low where you're, you're fighting that inertia to get going. So having a more balanced up and down season in terms of the opponents you're facing seeding wise, I thought was really good for our kids and allowed them to stay in it, right? Mentally, physically, and, and focus wise, just stay together and say like, mm, we were, we're almost there. Let's go get it now. Um, and that's really good as you, you know, the, the end of the season sort of snuck up on us and our, our seniors were like, oh my gosh, we only have, you know, two weeks left or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, this is crunch time. Let's go put some people away and, and get the job done and, and make sure that we're in good standing as we head into the tournament. And I think that the rhythm of the season really helped in that way. Oh, it feels so crazy. But I mean, we, we played close games with, yeah, I think with the exception of one, we played close games with Metro all year. And our team... You know, I know we have our, you know, Silver and Steel series, but I think our team really looks at Metro as a rivalry series, and those games are always really 
high momentum uh, and high energy. And, and so coming into that series, we felt, or coming into that game in the tournament, we felt really good about it. It's another time where, where we just don't have enough. We, we drop a close game. Um, but at the end of it all, you know, I, I thought we played well. We're poised from that game to, to move on and, and sort of recognize like, okay, now it's survive advance, you know. And, and so it's tough. The, I thought that their pitching staff really held us in an uncomfortable position throughout that game and they come away with that win. But, you know, at the same time, I thought our team adjusted throughout the game pretty well to, to come from behind and, and be in a chance and, or excuse me, be in a position to win it. You know, that's, that's what you're looking for. Every single game is be in a position where one play can change it and put it in your favor. And so I think that's the game that, that sticks out the most for, for our group and the one that you can relive most of you know, kind of play by play because, you know, you have times where we take this, we, we sort of stretch a lead, right, with Maddie on Ryan's triple. And I'm, you know, I get her to third and I'm looking at her and she's so excited. And then they're calling those, those runs back. And I'm sitting there like the up and down in that moment of having a kid who hadn't been on the field a ton throughout the year, who got a chance late in the season, really made the most of it, was contributing. It felt like every single at bat doing something huge. And then you've got that up and that high and that just happiness for that player in that moment to, oh, just kidding. <laughs> and we're like, what just happened, you know? And so that was such a high emotion game. Um, and, and I think at one point with Lexi Rayburn on the mound, I walked by and I handed her the ball and all she could say was like, I just want a calm inning. And, and then she threw what we would define as a calm inning. See, a calm inning. Um, but it was such an up and down game and such a fun game for our kids. And, you know, maybe sometimes a little higher, a little lower than need be. Um, in terms of the emotion in it, but just a really great win for our team in, in the postseason, which we haven't had in a while, right? Like the, the 2020 season gets cut short. Last year we're injury plagued and playing the who played who and how did this all work and where are we gonna end up? Um, and then this year our kids just really felt more in control. So to come away with that postseason win again, I think is another step for us in, in terms of momentum moving forward as a program. She did. Uh, it's a game that we walk away from on the wrong side of the scoreboard, right? But so frustrating because in our post-game meal, like we're sitting around talking about how I'm, it feels like she outpitched the other kid, right? Like the, we hit a lot of balls really hard at people. They popped the ball up, you know, or, or they just got the right hit at the right time to produce uh, more runs than we did. But throughout the game, she threw so so well and and that was kind of the story of the season is that at times we didn't produce the runs that we think we should behind our number one uh, whether that's the expectation that our ace is going to hold it together for us or, or whatever it is as a team um, but that conversation was constant for us throughout the year of we've got to find a way to send more people to the plate pass the bat down the lineup don't try to do too much and, and play as a team offense and produce runs um, and and we just weren't able to do that in that game, right? We score our run on a solo shot, which great, it's a great contribution. We just need more of that throughout the lineup to be more consistent. Our pitching staff I thought was incredible throughout the year in terms of their mental strength, their ability to bounce back, their ability to get out of a jam. Uh, we, we probably got in, we got ourselves into more bases loaded, no out or one out situations than anyone wants, right? But at times we found magnificent ways to get through it. And, and I, that speaks so much to their mental strength, their focus, and how well they complement each other. When you've got Bray coming in, kind of keeping people off balance, using more of a change up at times than she has in, in years past, um, finally just letting loose and, and letting her screwball go and, and using both sides of the plate, that you know is, is one person coming from this really tall stature that can, can really do some damage against some stabs and, and work through outs quickly. And then you got Lexi who can move the ball around and, and just really, again, mix speeds, get people to swing and miss. Then you bring in Rutkoff who, same way, like there are some swings against her that, that people really feel like they're keyed in and the ball will just fall off. And, and so they all just balance each other so well. And then you've got Cronin who can come in and throw it hard past somebody with a really heavy sinking ball. So, you know, for her to come in against against Regis, I believe, 
um, and pick up the double play to get out of things after giving up a walk. All emotions are all over the place. You can see it all over the field of, okay, how are we going to do this? And then you pick up this huge out that gives, again, contributes to that postseason win. They just balance each other out so well. Um, so they're a really fun group to have to, to be able to pop them in and, and use interchangeably when you need to. So, yeah, I was, I was so very proud of them and the way that they conducted themselves through the year and, you know, are ready to hand the ball over when they need to and, and be there and be supportive for each other. That you just, you know, that's what you want out of a staff. So, you know, Sawyer had such a phenomenal year. She has been a kid her whole career who we knew could blast it, right? Like I've, I've watched that kid hit home runs that you feel like will never come down. She's, she's, you know, hit it over some scoreboards. She's towered it over and wrapped some foul poles. She, she's done some really incredible things throughout her career. And what I thought was really cool this year um, to see is sort of the evolution of a kid who came in with a ton of power as a freshman, but would tell me, I can't hit it out on soft toss. And I'm like, what? Uh, and I can't hit it out opposite field. And, and this year she spread the ball all over the field. Um, she had a really nice mix of hitting for contact and hitting for power and really did put a charge in our, in our offense. You knew you had a shot if you could get to her spot in the lineup. And you know, that's just such a great thing. That's how you want to see your seniors finish their careers. Um, and, and just really fun to watch some of those wondering whether or not the umpire saw that it wrapped. How's this going to go? Because uh, it was hit a mile, and by the time it lands, you know, it's it's 15 feet on the other side of the line. Um, but, yeah, just a really explosive hitter who's been really fun to watch. Um, and then, you know, you mentioned Paige. Paige was so funny because she could get so excited that her feet were moving a little bit early in the season. And, you know, it's like as soon as she finally was ready to settle down and get locked in, she was hitting the ball hard every time it went in play, even ground outs. I'm just sitting at third going, I don't want to feel that, you know, <laughs> as they're trying to pick it up at third. So she just had such a great freshman year, and, and I expect that to grow and really energize our team. That's that's She's such a fun player to watch because she's enjoying herself so much in, in every at-bat, every play. Um, and I, I just think that's contagious and will continue to grow, grow through our team. But we had a lot of balance in this year's lineup. We had some people who could put down a bunt, put down a squeeze. We had some people who, you know, every time they came up, seemed like they're hitting for, for extra bases with, with either doubles or triples. Um, and then we had some folks who, you know, they just all year are hitting line drives right to people. So even some of the, the folks whose numbers aren't quite as high as their career highs, uh, you know, we walk into the end of year saying, like, we got to work on getting that to fall in a gap, right? We got to we got to get to a place where we can place hit. And, and so I think we've got a lot of dynamics in our lineup and a lot of returning strength coming back in our lineup. Definitely some big shoes to fill because both Bryn Horton and Sawyer had really career years for themselves. And, and that that's hard to fill in any given year. But, you know, that's what you want. You want people chasing and, and just working to get better and making that lineup better as we go. They've both been so full of energy. The, you, you, I don't know if, how many people noticed, but like when our team would huddle, Sawyer would get them going early in the game, and that's when I have to walk away because there are things said in that circle that you know probably aren't for public ears. But you know, to bring that to the field every single day over four years, through all the ups and downs, you know, both players had a lot of energy or had a lot of injuries that they dealt with throughout the year, uh, throughout the years, either trying to delay a surgical repair on something, trying to work through it, a lot of setbacks or, or two steps forward and then three back or, you know, a lot of ups and downs in there. And to watch them come back and, again, energize our team, lead people, help teach them our systems and, and have career years is just so phenomenal. Plus, each is able to walk away from this sort of on their own terms. You know, Sawyer got an opportunity to apply for a job right out of school that you know, she said, I know I want to play, but I don't know if that's going to be there. So I've got to make my choice and, and to, to help people make those decisions and, and watch them mature through it and sort of move on to the next phase of their life. And with Bryn, same thing, graduated, couldn't really find a, a grad program that would fit her future goals, making those tough decisions and watching them mature through it. You're going to miss that, right? Because they're veteran kids that are, are able to help lead our younger ones. And so... You know, you, there's a lot to lose in any senior that walks away because the life experience you gain over an athletic career, you know, 
there's gifts in it that we don't see, right? We're not going to see it on the field. You're not going to see it on a stat sheet. You see it in their interactions with their teammates. And, you know, the, there's so much that they've passed through the group that I, I think will be missed. I mean, we'll start with that recruiting por- part of it because we knew going into this year, we don't stand to lose much, right? We've, we've had some big contributors who want to stay and, and continue to, to be a part of the team and continue contributing on and off the field. And some of those were like, yes, like, let's hold on to that as long as we can. Um, and, and so when you're in that position, we kind of took the approach of needing to know if we were to lose someone unexpectedly, where can we predict that that might happen? And so we thought if we were going to lose folks to academic challenges, not being able to figure out how to keep it working academically, our biggest chances to lose were in pitching and catching. So we went after pitching and catching with versatility. So, you know, we bring in a pitcher third baseman combo or pitcher infield combo, um, some catcher infield, catcher outfield combos within this recruiting class, um, bringing in a lefty who, you know, pitches and plays outfield, doing some things that if we were going to lose people, we're bringing in depth as, as we filled in those pitching and catching spots. So, you know, for us, we're going we're gonna to have some young pitching and catching to mix with our veterans. And I'm really excited about that because our, our bullpen has really proven that they know how to manage themselves and manage the highs and lows of a game. What a gift to be able to give to those, those young kids as they come in. And, you know, even, you know, talking about Courtney Heller, who post-injury hasn't been on the field as much, but having her in that bullpen to help direct our younger catchers and help them direct the defense, that's what our fall is going to be about. Uh, you know, we, we had so many games where we felt like where we sort of put ourselves behind the eight balls when we let a batter runner get to second, trying to force a play that we don't have at the plate. And the vision in some of those veteran kids being able to see that and help our younger kids be able to see it and direct it, you know, that's, that's so much of what our fall is all about. And then again, it's, it's growing this culture. We were so fortunate this year with our team chemistry. We worked with you know, Dr. Roberta Krause all year to be able to develop a chemistry where the kids could compete together and cooperate at the same time. And now it's about pushing that envelope even farther of, okay, how do we compete and hold ourselves to a higher standard and bounce back when things don't go our way and learn to finish things out, right? Like not settle for a, a little lead that we're gonna try to hang on to, but really put some runs on the board and, and keep control and, and keep momentum in a game. So, you know, all of that mental longevity and mental endurance portion is, is what we're working on in our fall because our kids are excited to come back and play. And when you have kids that are excited and motivated to play together, you know, that's, that's really exciting. It makes for a fun fall because we've all seen this, right? It's a long preseason. You got to figure out how do you keep them coming back hungrier to play in September when you don't have a game until February. And so that's our goal is to, to come in and really work on those everyday parts that added up, you know, hopefully end up putting us in a position where we're playing longer in May.